Hello viewers, this Dow Too Fast here. I'm very excited to show you this dash cam from the company Blackview. This one here is the model DR750 2CH LTE. With the name LTE, you might be wondering if this is like the cellular LTE. And the answer is yes. Besides having a front and rear camera for video recording, it also has a LTE broadband circuit for data connectivity. You can actually install a SIM card into this dash cam like you would with a cell phone. With the data connectivity, you can view the real-time live video stream from the dash cam anywhere in North America. They'll also give you real-time GPS information like speed and location. Now there are a lot of information I need to go over in this video. So this video is going to be a little bit longer than usual, but I will show you everything from unboxing to setup to installation and taking a look at the daytime and nighttime recording. So stay tuned. Let me first show you the unboxing of this Blackview DR750 2CH LTE dash cam. And here's a DR750 2CH LTE dash cam. And there's a rear camera. Quick start guide. SIM activation guide. Here's a rear camera cable, power cable, plastic pry tool, 32 gigabyte micro SD memory card, extra mounting tape, SIM tray removal tool, micro SD memory card reader, and mounting clips. Here's a look at everything you get with this dash cam. So let's have a closer look at this dash cam. Right here is a front camera. The resolution on it is Full HD 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. This dash cam uses a Sony Starvis image sensor, which provides excellent clarity for both day and night. Now this dash cam is rather large compared to other dash cams on the market. The overall length is 5.5 inch, and the height is 2 inch. If you look at the overall design, there's a lot of ventilation holes at the bottom and the top. This helps cool the electronics inside. The operating temperature is minus 20 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius or minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Below the front camera, there is an LED status indicator right here. Looking at the back, right here is a record LED, GPS LED, Wi-Fi LTE indicator, and right here is a speaker. Looking on this side, there's a built-in proximity sensor right here. By waving your hand, you can toggle the audio recording on and off. You can also trigger a manual event video recording. Looking on the other side, right here is a button to format the micro SD memory card Right here is a connector for the rear camera cable. And below that, there's a Wi-Fi button. And next to it is a DC power input connector. Now this is actually a cover you can open up. Once you open this up, you can insert the micro SD memory card. Now this dash cam does support up to a maximum of 256 gigabyte memory size. This dash cam does include a 32 gigabyte micro SD memory card. To install it, simply insert the memory card into the slot and put the cover back on. At the top, there's a windshield mount. To install it, remove the backing on this double side tape and then stick this directly onto the windshield. To adjust the angle of the camera, you can rotate this. Looking on this side of the mount, you see there's a lock button. If you push this in, it will release a dash cam from the mount. Right here is a SIM card tray. Use the included tool to release a tray. Here I have a SIM card from T-Mobile. If this is a new SIM card, Make sure it's activated by your provider and the service includes data plan. Place a SIM card in the tray and then install it into the dash cam. Now you can reinstall the mounts. This dash cam also has built in GPS to record speed and location information. Here's a look at the rear camera. The resolution on this is Full HD 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. This camera also uses a Sony Starvis CMOS sensor. On this side is a connector where you connect the rear camera cable. On the other side, this LED indicator. To install this camera, remove the backing on this double side tape and then stick this directly onto the back window. After you install it, you can rotate this camera to adjust the angle. Now I want to take a minute to go over the cellular LTE function on this dash cam. Now one thing you may or may not know about the LTE is it uses many different frequency bands. So let's say if you were to buy a cellular phone overseas, you have to check and make sure the frequency on that cellular phone will work for the network in North America. 
This Blackview DR750 2CH LTE dash cam I have here is the NA version for North America. If you're in the US, it'll work with AT&T and T-Mobile. And if you're in Canada, it'll work with Rogers and TELUS. There are three other versions of this DR750 2CH LTE dash cam. There's a GL for global version, an AU for Australia version, and JP for Japan version. This is important to know because if you buy this dash cam from a different country, the LTE function will not work for US or Canada. So for all the viewers watching this video, make sure you buy this dash cam from an authorized dealer in your region. With the LTE connection to the cloud, the Blackview cloud service will give you features such as remote live view, cloud storage, push notifications, live GPS, and two-way voice communication. The Blackview cloud service is free to use for the basic free plan. This includes one dash cam per account. You also have 10 minutes of live view per day and five gigabyte of cloud storage that's saved for 90 days. You also get unlimited push notifications live GPS, but it does not include GPS tracking. If you upgrade to their smart plan, the cost is $11.99 per month, and this plan will allow you to register three dash cams. Any additional dash cams will be an extra $9 per month. You also get unlimited live view, and you get five gigabyte of cloud storage per dash cam. Those files will be saved for 365 days. This plan also includes seven days of GPS tracking. If you have a fleet of vehicles, then you want to be subscribed to the fleet plan. With a PAR cable, Connect this end to the connector that's marked DC in. The length of this cable is 14 and a half feet. Next, connect the rear camera cable to the dash cam. This cable is 19 and a half feet long. On one end of the cable, you have this 90 degree connector. Plug this connector to the dash cam. Plug this to the connector marked rear on the dash cam. Connect the other end of the cable to the rear camera. On your mobile phone, install the Blackview app. Go to your settings and allow all required permissions. Now power on the dash cam. Initializing SD card. Please do not disconnect the power. Restarting. Black view for your safe driving. Starting normal recording. Please activate your SIM card. First thing you want to do is set up a Black view account in the app. If this is the first time using the app, sign up, log in. Here, ask you if you want to receive push notifications. Yes. Next, add the dash cam to the app. Add camera. Now scan the QR code that's on the side of the dash cam. With the QR code scanned, next I'll ask you if you want to allow Blackview app to access your dash cam's GPS data. Allow. The camera has been added successfully. Now what you want to do is connect to the dash cam using the Wi-Fi. You need to turn on the Wi-Fi on the dash cam by pressing the Wi-Fi button on the side right here. Wi-Fi on. Select Wi-Fi. Here it tells you to go to your phone's Wi-Fi setting and look for the SSID Blackview and then log in using the password as printed on the side of the dash cam. So in the Wi-Fi setting, here you see the Blackview SSID. Select that. You want to check this so you remain connected even with no internet connection. Go back to the app, go back to Wi-Fi. Now the app is connected to the dash cam using the Wi-Fi connection. To activate the SIM card, press the SIM card icon at the top right here. You need to specify the correct APN for the carrier you're using. Press the search icon right here. You can find the country you're in or search the network carrier name. Now before I do a search, let me go to US. Under United States, you see supports T-Mobile and AT&T. Select Done. As you can see, SIM card activation is complete. Press OK. With the SIM card set up, this dash cam now have access to the internet. Now this Blackview app is still connected to the dash cam using Wi-Fi, and through this dash cam, is able to get internet access also. If you don't want this, you can turn off the Wi-Fi by pressing the Wi-Fi button on the side. And that's what I'll do. I'll turn off the Wi-Fi right now. Wi-Fi off. Looking at the phone right now, you can see I'm on the LTE network and not on Wi-Fi. Here's a Blackview dash cam. Using the cellular LTE connection, I can also look at the live view. Live view on. At the bottom of this screen, there's a Google map showing you the location. At the top is a live view. On the right side, there's a menu here. Select that. 
If there's a new firmware, you can do a remote firmware update. If there's a new firmware available, select download. After the download, the dashcam will reboot to apply the new firmware. The firmware is updated. Press OK. Select the menu icon again. Go into Settings. Privacy Settings. You can enable or disable the Allow GPS Access. If you disable this, the car's location and speed will not be accessible over the cloud. Share location by default is disabled. If you enable this, then other users around the world can see your live view. For privacy, you probably want to leave this disabled. Go back. Firmware Settings. Basic, time, by default the sync with GPS time is enabled. This will automatically set the date and time for you. You can also set the GMT time zone for the region you're in. Daylight saving time, you can enable this or disable this. Video, you can set the image quality. By default is highest, you can set it for highest, high or normal. Enhanced night vision, by default is on. You can set it for parking mode only or off. Here you can set the brightness for the front camera and the rear camera. Recording. Normal recording is enabled. Next parking mode recording. By default is set to time lapse. With the time lapse recording in parking mode, the dash cam will continuously record one frame per second. And when you play back the recorded video, it will play it back at 30 frames per second. If an impact is detected by the dash cam, it will create a buffered event video recording. You also have the option for motion and impact detection. When the dash cam detect motion or an impact, it will record a short video clip. Now the dash cam does have a video buffer, so it will be able to record few seconds leading up to the event and after the event. Now for this dash cam to go into parking mode recording, after a couple minutes of the vehicle not moving, the dash cam will automatically switch from normal recording to parking mode recording. And it does require the dash cam to have constant power. Since the dash cam is powered with a cigarette lighter plug, once you turn off the ignition, the dash cam will power off. In order to have parking mode recording, you need to either install a PowerMagic Pro hardware kit which will require you to tap the power from the fuse box. The second option is to install a backup battery like the Blackview PowerMagic Ultra battery. Now I want to mention this because the dash cam on its own with a cigarette lighter power plug plugged into an outlet that supplies ignition 12 volt will not give you parking mode function. I will do a separate video showing you how to install the PowerMagic hardware kit and the Blackview backup battery. Rear camera recording in parking mode by default is on, so the front and rear camera will be recorded together. If you set it to off, then the rear camera will stop recording 5 minutes after entering the parking mode. Voice recording will allow you to mute or unmute the microphone, so if you want to record audio, you'll want to enable this. The day and time timestamp on the video is enabled. Speed unit, here you can select kilometers per hour or miles per hour, or you can turn it off. Lock event files, by default is disabled. If you enable this, when the memory card is full, it will start overwriting the locked event files. So I recommend you leave this disabled. Front camera rotation, you can enable or disable this. Rear camera orientation. Depending on how you install the back camera, right side up or upside down, you can set it for default view, or rotate the video 180 degrees, or set it for mirror video. Go back. So that's a basic setting. Go back. Next, sensitivity. Here you can set the sensitivity of the G sensor. First one is normal mode recording. You can set how sensitive you want for the G sensor. Up down motion, side to side, and front and back. Next is a setting for parking mode. Same thing. Third one here is a motion detection for parking mode. Here you can set the sensitivity for the motion detection. You can also select the detection region. So by default, all these boxes are checked. So let's say if your car is parked on the street and you have trees on the left side that can trigger the motion, you can turn off the detection region here. Same thing for the rear camera. Let's go back. System, LED indicator light. By default, all these LED status lights on. You can turn it off if you want. Proximity sensor. This is a built-in proximity sensor found on the side of the dash cam. When you wave your hand in front of the proximity sensor, you can have it turn on or off the microphone, or trigger a manual recording, or you can disable the sensor. Voice guidance. These are the voice prompt you'll hear from the dash cam. You can enable or disable any of these. You can set the volume of the voice guidance. Schedule reboot. Speed alert. You can enable this or disable this. You can also configure a text overlay on the video. Here you have the LTE Wi-Fi setup. Cloud. 
You can enable or disable the cloud service. Last menu item, firmware language. This is the event auto upload settings. By default, it's disabled. Any event recording that's saved on the SD card will automatically be uploaded to the cloud in low resolution. This will only work if the dash cam has LTE connection to the cloud. Now in this video, I'll be installing the dash cam using the cigarette lighter plug. Again, this will not give you the parking mode recording function. I will make another video where I'll show you how to install the PowerMagic Pro hardware kit and also the optional PowerMagic battery pack. Powering down. I'll be installing this dash cam in my Nissan Pathfinder. To install the dash cam, remove the backing on a double side tape and then stick this directly onto the windshield. Connect the power cable. Connect the rear camera cable. Route both of these cables up to the headliner over to the A pillar on the driver's side. Use a plastic pry tool to pull back on the headliner and then tuck the two cables behind it. Pull back the weather stripping. This panel is held in by clips. Go ahead and pop it out. With a power wire, run this along the side down to your kick panel. With the rear camera cable, I'm gonna route the cable behind the side curtain airbag. Now you can run the cable along the side all the way to the back. Run the power cable down along the side here and then tuck it behind this panel. Route the power cable underneath the dash behind this panel and over to the center console. Plug the power plug into the 12 volt accessory port. Reinstall the panel. Reinstall the weather stripping. I ran the rear camera cable along the side here. When you get to the B pillar, tuck the cable behind this panel. Right now I'm in the second row. Continue running this cable all the way to the back. Brought the cable behind the headliner and over to the middle here. Right here is the end of the cable. I left enough length so I'll reach a camera where I'll be installing on the back window. With the additional cable, just tuck it behind the headliner here. To install the rear camera, remove the backing on a double side tape and then stick this directly on the back window. Connect the rear camera cable. Here's a look at the installed camera. Start the car up. With the ignition on, the dash cam will power on and begin recording. It will also connect to the LTE cloud and lock onto the GPS satellite. Don't forget to adjust the angle of the camera. With the proximity sensor on the side, if you wave your hand here, you can disable or enable the microphone. Let me show you what the live view looks like while the car is being driven. Right now my wife is driving my vehicle. The dash cam is connected to the LTE cloud and my phone is on the LTE network. In the Blackview app, select Cloud, select the dash cam, select Live View at the bottom here. Live View on. Right now you're looking at the Live View. Tap the screen, select Rear, and there's a Rear View. Go back. Now below the live view, there's a Google map here showing you the direction of travel and it's real time. Through this app, you also have two-way communication with the people in the car. There's a microphone at the top right here. Press it. Now you can tap to talk. Are you okay? Please let me know. Are you okay? Please let me know. I am fine. I will see you shortly. When you're done, you can close this. Also, with a push notification, the app will notify you when the dash cam is connected to the LTE cloud and when it's disconnected. It will also notify you of any event recording. So if there's an impact while you're driving, you'll be notified of the events. To view the recorded video, you can either play it back in the app, select the file you want to see, choose a resolution, you can also download the file to your mobile phone. Or you can remove the micro SD card from the dash cam and put it into your computer using a card reader.
As you saw in the recorded video, this Blackview dr 750 2CH LTE dash cam performed very well. Looking at the daytime recording, the picture is very clear and is able to capture a lot of details. You can easily read license plates in front of you and street signs on the road. As for the nighttime recording, it is able to capture pretty good details even with very little ambient lights. Now the dash cam does record both the front and the rear video simultaneously. So if anything was to happen while you're driving, you'll be able to capture everything leading up to the events. Now of course the biggest benefit of getting this dash cam is the LTE connectivity. With it you'll be able to get live video streaming and the location of the vehicle with the GPS data. The Blackview basic free plan is free to use, but if you want to use the LTE feature, you will have to pay for a cellular plan to utilize the cloud features. Now this dash cam retail for $420. If you're interested in getting this, I'll include the link below. I'll also include a 5% off coupon code you can use at checkout to get some additional savings. I hope you enjoy watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave one in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. To support this channel, remember to click on thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of new videos.